Well, hello to the First Baptist family and the friends of First Baptist Tulsa. This is our midweek update for June 29th, 2022. And so this is our 321, three things I want you to know. Two chapters in the Bible to read, one way to pray. So three things I want you to know. First of all, July, uh, believe it or not, we're getting ready. We're preparing for back to school. Uh, if you want to buy some extra jeans, uh, new jeans, next time you're at Walmart or Target or wherever you shop, drop those in our blue bins around the campus when we do our back to school events here in just a few short weeks for our five partnership schools. We'll use those jeans to help uh, some students go back to school. Everyone loves um, some new school supplies, new clothes for school, and we want to help out in our community. So new jeans, we're collecting those during July. Second thing, we want to keep Falls Creek in front of you. That's July 11th through 16th, really close to the end of sign up. But even if you're not sending a students, uh, sending students, would you would you pray for the students that are going to Falls Creek uh, in that middle week in July, July 11th through 16? Very important week in the life of a lot of students. Third thing I want you to know is about the midweek update itself. Um, we are going to get to two chapters in the Bible here in just a moment. The Book of Numbers. Next week is going to be a little bit different for our midweek update. I'm going to take advantage of this break between Numbers and Deuteronomy and just do a one-week update. We're not going to read you know, a couple chapters from the Bible. We're going to talk about how to read the Bible. As pastors, we say, hey, you should read your Bible every day, and we tell people the should. We just don't communicate the how, how a person should do that. And so next week, we're going to, I'm just going to walk through a little process called Lectio Divina, Divine Reading, and how to read part of the Scripture, meditate, pray on it, contemplate the presence of God. Uh, it doesn't take very long to learn this. It's pretty simple. Uh, but next week, um, you'll want to tune in. If you have trouble connecting with the Scripture and how am I supposed to go about reading this big book called the Bible, next week will be for you. Okay, so those are the three things I want you to know. Now here's two chapters in the Bible I do want you to read, and it's our last reading from the book of Numbers. I'm going to ask you to read Numbers 32 and then skip over to chapter 35. Okay, so a couple of things to look for here. Actually, 35 I think is where the meat and potatoes is, but 32, this is good to know. As the Israelites are crossing into the Promised Land, there were a few of the tribes that said, hey, the land here on the eastern side of the Jordan, it really does meet our needs. And so instead of us crossing over the Jordan with the other tribes, can we settle here on, on this eastern bank? They're allowed to do that, but the tribes have to go across and help conquer the land for the other tribes that are crossing. It wasn't them bowing out of their responsibility. So what you see here in chapter 32 is, is a near misunderstanding, right? There's a conversation between Moses and these tribes that want to stay. Moses is saying, hey, are you not wanting to cross into the land? Or are you wanting to be cowards like the generation ago? Do you remember what happened? So this near misunderstanding will actually come back again in the book of Joshua. We get to it in a few months. So, but, but here for now, a misunderstanding is avoided, but you see just a bit of, of how the Israelites were going to be spreading out over the land. Now, chapter 35 is important, not only for what it says, but also for what it foreshadows. So as the Israelites go into this land, God says, look, the Levites, the people assigned to serve at uh, the sanctuary, at the tabernacle, ultimately the temple, I don't want you to all settle in one place. So I want you to spread out. Levites, I want you to spread out over the entire country. You'll be given a city here, city here, city here, so that no matter where people live, that they'll have access to a man of God in a part of the tribe of Levi. Also, in chapter 35, cities of refuge. So if someone accidentally kills someone else, what we would call manslaughter, instead of vengeance being brought on them, or instead of retaliation instantly, these people who had committed unintentional murder or manslaughter, they could flee to a city of refuge, there take refuge until their case could be heard, and avoid vigilante justice and to make sure that cooler heads actually prevail. Now, why is chapter 35 important for us? Okay, so think about this. God in the land said, I wanted you to always have access to a person of God, and so the Levites will spread out. We're going to have these cities of refuge all over the land. You'll always have access to justice. Listen, Jesus is our man of God. 
He is the one that we have ready access to wherever we are in life. We have Him. Jesus is our city of refuge. We have access to Him. When we sin, we, we go and hide in Him, you know, and in Him is forgiveness, in Him is restoration. In Him, we are brought back to a right relationship with God. So all of these are just kind of hints. Not only are these good laws and a good footing of society, but um, these are, in, in a small way, just small little foreshadowings of who Jesus is and who He can be in our lives. So read, that's Numbers chapter 32 and chapter 35. The one way to pray this week, the little verse on top of our worship announcement sheet this week, is Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So to pray to God that, God, I, I don't want to be anxious about anything. I'm going to bring everything to you in prayer. I'm going to be thankful for what you give. I ask your peace that would, would surround my life. Next week, when we talk about Lectio Divina, this way of reading the Scripture and praying the Scripture, we're going to use this particular verse. This is a very rich verse and a good one to practice with. For this week, just pray it back to God. Thank God that He hears, and thanks, thank God that He gives us that peace that passes every explanation. Love you. Love being your pastor. Hope you're having a great week, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.